Intel and Nvidia's deal is bad for the industry. We've got all of the next gen Intel chips detailed and AMD strikes a massive deal that's gonna change the future of the company. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, October 7th, 2025. We're gonna start off with me mentioning, yes, my eye uh, is inflamed with an allergenic response. So uh, thank you for noticing. It's just gonna be there. It'll go away eventually. Number two, we have our PC giveaway drawings happening this Friday over on our Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech for the Falcon Northwest Tiki and Talon PCs with a 5090 in the Talon, a 9070 XT in the Tiki. And then over on our twitch.tv forward slash UFD music stream, we will have our 5070 Ti drawing. And then as a reminder, today is Amazon Prime Day for those of you who celebrate in the United States. And Reese will be live with some deals over on our Twitch stream in case you wanna join in also get some entries into that pc giveaway you can uh, check that out and some companies are checking out the intel nvidia deal that happened recently and saying hey this is going to create some complications some headaches maybe some little wrinkles in how we actually ship things out some supply chain complications if you will specifically acer coming out and saying that hey this might be a little tricky business especially stating that people are focusing on how nvidia's investment affects tsmc but rather it's more about how is this going to complicate how companies deliver their products this is going to add new SKUs into the mix if intel is still making their own gpus and selling c GPUs that have those as integrated graphics. Now we're gonna have Intel ones with NVIDIA RTX GPUs. It's gonna create a whole slew of issues with multiple generations of x86 processors in coexistence. And the third vendor is only gonna create hurdles in terms of things like managing your inventory and procuring the right ones. And especially when you look at things like AMD's difficulty in getting into the laptop scene and getting into the pre-built scene, it's gonna create even further complications in all of those regards. So it's not just a boom that's happening to PC gamers. It might be that this deal actually goes through, but the complication happens with, is this actually gonna make it to market? This is something that AMD has struggled with for generations. They'll announce new laptop setups at CES and then just not come out with anything for many, many months. You see it with things like Framework. They started out with a 7700S in their dedicated GPU for their laptop, Framework 16. And then they switched over to 5070 Ti because AMD didn't replace the 7700S. There's nothing, there's no announcement. There's like what, there's no supply chain for that. And so that's gonna just potentially uh, continue to exist as we add more companies into the mix. But you know what you should add into your mix? Today's video is sponsored. Monitors are an essential part of any PC desk setup. And with how big some of these screens are getting, the included stands are starting to really take up valuable desktop real estate. That's why using the HND S7 monitor arms from today's sponsor, Wanwo, are pretty much a must for everyone serious about their setup. Whether it's work, gaming, or a little bit of both, it sucks to view your monitors from bad angles or not be able to easily flip one vertical style. Doomed to have the Discord UI burned into it for years Years to come. Starting with the unboxing and setup, one will mix upgrading to their HND S7 monitor arms of breeds. Just a few thingamabobs screwed to some doohickeys and you got two beautifully mounted monitors. With 90 degrees of tilt, 180 degrees of swivel, and 360 degrees of rotation, you can pretty much find your ideal viewing angle with the additional benefit of adjusting at the drop of the hat. The arms must have also been hit in the gym because they can support monitors from 13 inches up to 40 inches, all while keeping them nice and steady. Now, aside from cleaning up your desktop, one will also makes keeping your wires tidy with built-in cable channels. If you're looking for a wallet-friendly monitor mounting solution, grab yourself some Wanwo HND S7 monitor arms via the link in the description below, also, be sure to check out Wanwo at DreamHack from October 31st to November 2nd. Thanks to Wanwo for sponsoring. Well, if you use a laptop with a docking station to monitors on Wanwo Arms, this Intel Panther-like news might be exciting to you because we have details of all the SKUs about these chips. In case you don't know this, SKU is spelled S-K-U because it's an acronym that stands for Stock Keeping Unit. It is not SKU like something that's Askew. I see some people misspell this sometimes in the comments, but Panther like chips are going to come in uh, several different flavors. You've got the XH variety chips that are going to be high powered with 
integrated GPUs that are beefy. You've got the non X H series chips, which are going to be even higher powered, but with limited discrete graphics. And then you've got the U series chips. We're going to be the low power, more mainstream laptop chips that are happening. So video cards has a nice little breakdown sheet detailing things like the core ultra nine X three eight, eight H, which is going to be a 16 core chip. You've got four P cores, eight E cores, four LP cores, and then 12 X E three GPU cores. The core ultra seven X three, six H. These are so hard to say, especially quickly. They're not as bad as the Ryzen AI Plus Max 93 4000 billion uh, mega super, but still kind of rough. These are coming in at 28 watts, but that Ultra 7 has 16 cores. Very similar, probably going to have a clock speed difference in terms of uh, what it looks like, and then still the same 12 XE3 cores. The Panther Lake H with the non integrated Max GPUs, 4 XE3 cores on those, 45 watts of power going towards the CPU. Ultra 9, Ultra 7, uh, both having the same core count, but likely to be different differentiated by clock speed variant. So in case you're interested in all that, that's happening. And what's also happening is Reese is saving you money so that you potentially save up for a Panther like laptop in case you want one. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Deals, <laughs> deals. This dude's got deals. Did you know it's Prime Day? It's Prime Day. Prime Deals Prime Day. Prime Big Deals Day. Can you smell the orange chocolate switch on my breath? A little bit, yeah. Okay. And hey, first up, the deal we got is Elgato Keylight Neo for only $50.07, making it $39.92 off. But don't forget, Amazon's not the only retailer having deals today. We've got the Sennheiser HD560S wired open back headphones, which we all have here in the office, but these are open box for only $69.99, making it $130 off. Remember the golden rule, open box headphones, yes, earphones, not so much. Much. Lies, I want the earwax in oh. my ears. I want to I want to share. I want to share. Don't do it. But the next up, we have the crucial P510 Gen 5 NVMe M.2 SSD with the one terabyte variant going for $79.99, making it $20 off. But then we also have the Apple AirPods 4 with active noise canceling for $129.99, making it $50 off. Next up, we have the Elgato Stream Deck Plus and their XLR Dock combo for $179.99, making it $120 off. Probably my favorite thing on my desk at home. That guy has it too. I, I bought, I, I got it for him for our streams. Let's introduce Zach here. This guy streams on twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech Friday nights and sa Sunday afternoons. Eastern, it, not just your time. Actually, yes, that's true. I'm in South African time, so it's actually weird. Oh wait, he's here in South Africa with us. Well, I stream at nighttime here. Yeah. But I haven't streamed. Yeah. Because you're here. Yeah. Yeah. And then lastly today, we have this LG 27 inch 1440p 280 hertz OLED monitor for only $599.99, making it $250. Oh, 280 hertz? Mm hmm. Wow. That's 40 more than I expected. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But remember, we're also doing a Prime Day stream where we're crowdsourcing deals today. So, uh, hey, come join us. Good luck. Good luck. I'm sure Reese mentioned this, but don't forget, yes, Prime Day streams happening over on our twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. And it looks like Maxon has a heck of a deal when it comes to their dual Intel GPUs that they've been selling. I highlighted this in yesterday's episode of Hot News. I'm potentially able to procure one here in South Africa from where they have these Maxon Pro Dual B6048 gig GPUs, but there's a new variant the liquid-cooled version that comes in a single-slot setup. So Maxon showing this off, you get two GPUs in a single slot with some barred fittings at the end to make it so that your thermal management is quite good, and they even highlight how you could potentially stuff four of these bad boys into a W790 AMD motherboard, allowing you to get eight Intel GPUs in a single setup, 192 gigabytes of VRAM. This could be a potentially cool little mini server that you're building in case you want all this. No details on price or release date at the current moment, but it is something that's gonna be hitting the market. And in case you check the stock market, you might've been wondering yesterday, why is AMD up 26% to be at nearly a uh, all time high to, to beat out what they were at in 2024? What's going on there? Well, it turns out that they inked a massive deal with OpenAI for a lot of graphics cards and potentially some stock investment from OpenAI with regards to this whole thing playing out. So the deal is a multi-year, multi-generation strategic partnership between OpenAI and AMD for things like ChatGPT, Sora, all those things that are gonna be rolled
rolling out six gigawatts of AI infrastructure as part of this plan with an initial one gigawatt rollout of AMD's Instinct MI450 GPUs that's going to happen sometime in the second half of 2026 as long as you believe AMD in their roadmaps and definitely don't think that hey you never really delivered on the MI300 on time what is to make us think that you're going to deliver on the MI450 turns out OpenAI is uh, not necessarily asking those questions or if they are it doesn't really matter because this is more about the promotional material this is more about the marketing the looks and the uh stock valuation increase that's happening but on top of this whole multi-billion dollar gpu deal that's happening with amd openai also has the option to purchase 160 million amd shares at a penny each with them vesting at different milestones through this entire partnership so giving openai a pretty significant stake in everything that's going on with AMD. You might remember that uh, they're not appearing to be pretty preferential. It has been that OpenAI has been mostly NVIDIA GPUs for a while. NVIDIA personally delivering some server racks to Sam Altman. And recently they signed a hundred billion dollar deal with NVIDIA for 10 gigawatts worth of AI data centers. So that's a bigger deal with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been more reliable at hitting their, uh, their release timelines. Not quite as good in recent years. Blackwell was a little delayed, especially with some reports of overheating issues that were happening in certain server racks, but uh, more consistent than AMD has been. But really what this shows is that AMD is playing the same game that Nvidia is. Their focus is not necessarily on making sure that gamers are satisfied. They're more interested in getting all these AI deals signed, getting all the billions of dollars from those little partnerships that are happening because that's going to make them more money than we could ever give them. Multi-billion dollars coming from the MI450. I mean, NVIDIA is only making three odd billion dollars from gamers every single quarter. AMD's nowhere near that. So this could potentially disrupt supply chains. This could potentially disrupt AMD's focus, create new situations where gamers are even less prioritized by Team Red. Let me know what you think of this OpenAI AMD deal down below in the comments while I see what you had to say in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Red Slate saying that uh, X was previously the de designation for Intel's enthusiast slash prosumer processors for high-end desktops. That's that's correct. It also was their motherboard X299, all that kind of stuff. And then yeah, 16950X. I, it, it, it was at least at the end to indicate that it was super powerful, not integrated GPUs. Like there is a change in form. But then speaking of changes in form, Grax are saying uh, the fact that X means not 10 is literally breaking from 2000 years of tradition. That's quite a it, is. it means 12. It's awesome. That's, yeah, that's a good point. And then we got Max saying at UFD Tech, I have a question. I'm going to upgrade from a Ryzen 5 7500F. Now I'm stuck with upgrading to a 7900X, 7800X 3D, or 9700X. I have budget only to one of these CPUs to pair with an RX 9070 and 850 watt PSU. Number one, you didn't ask a question. Number two, if you're trying to choose between those three CPUs, if you're just a gamer, get the 7800X 3D. That's going to last you multiple generations. You're going to be able to upgrade from the 9070 and still have plenty of wiggle room in the performance. You can check out a recent sponsored video that we did with AMD where we paired it with a 5090 and uh, it, it still had plenty of room to go. You can check that video out right up there. But also, one thing I, I probably am just going to say is a 7500F and a 9070 is a totally chill pair. The 7500F honestly could probably go to a 9070 XT and even higher 7900 XTX. You could fit a faster GPU with that CPU depending on the resolution that you play at 1440p. You're gonna have plenty of space left in that 7500F. I wouldn't necessarily think you need to upgrade now. You could potentially continue to save up. Maybe don't upgrade your CPU and upgrade your GPU or upgrade something else in your system. Get a better modern or something like that. You know, I think uh, we're at the place where most modern gaming CPUs can handle most gaming graphics cards. Uh, Core Ultra 3, really, unless you're getting a 5090, you're gonna be mostly okay with any GPU that's on the market. The IPC is really good, you know, as long as you're doing appropriate resolution for power of graphics card, you know, 5070 Ti to 5080 being at 1440p, potentially 4K, then, uh, you know, CPU choice 
isn't as impactful as it once was in previous generation. And part of the problem that we have in this whole conversation is that a lot of people look at the charts that get put out with like day one reviews and showing that, oh, you get like an extra 3% out of the core Ultra 9 versus the Ultra 7. You should obviously go get that one, but not taking into account that that's like best case scenario in uh, testing with like the fastest graphics card, when you're testing with just like normal systems, you're, ne you're never gonna notice the difference. If I sat you down in a 7500F and 7800X 3D system, both with a 9070, and asked you to tell me which one had which CPU with no frame counter on, you'd be like, these are the exact same experience. I'm getting the exact same pleasure out of both of these games. It's because it's not noticeable unless you're you're either frame counting or you're, uh, you're suboptimally using your PC. To answer the non-question, 7800X3D, but to answer the question that wasn't asked, you don't need to upgrade. And that would be my opinion right now. You can you can hold out. And I'm not gonna hold out this episode of Hot News any longer. I'm gonna be done here. I'll check you out to, to later. I really won't. I'm gonna be looking at a camera, uh, hopefully with a less inflamed eye.